So we're going to be taking a look at how voting patterns change and what the demographic effects might be. Um, as you know, we now have the first of the 2010 census data are out. Um, and we've been looking at that very closely. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we got the data that the redistricting of the U.S. Congress will be based on. Uh, Massachusetts will lose a state. Um, and I just pulled down uh, the latest piece of the U.S. Census website, and we can go to individual states and take a look at um, what they look like. So here's Rhode Island. Uh, you'll see that the white population, if you look over here, uh, between 2000 and 2010, the state population today is just a little over a million, pretty tiny state. The white population between 2000 and 2010 declined by about 3.9%. The black population, which is 5.7% of the total, grew by 28.3%, by about a quarter. The Hispanic population you'll see here, which is now 12.4%, one in eight of the people who live in the state of Rhode Island um, are Hispanic or Latino, an increase of 44%. If we go and we take a look at Massachusetts, pardon? We can take a look here, and you'll see our population now is about 6.6 .6 million. Uh, up from about 6.2 million uh, in 2000. Again, a decline in the white population of about percent, an increase in the black population of about 27 percent. That now makes up 6.6 percent of the entire population of Massachusetts. The Hispanic population is now 9.6 percent, larger than the black population, and grew by over 46 percent, as did the Asian population. You would have seen this as a headline in the Boston Globe, I think, two days ago. Um, and you'll see what it is by just looking at individual counties. Here's Essex County, 743,000. Here we are, right here in Suffolk County, 722,000 population, of which about 630,000, uh, 618,000 of that is technically in the city of Boston. Let's take a look at a few other states. Let's look at California. California with a population of 37 million, so roughly 37 times the size of Rhode Island in terms of population. By the way, they have two senators, so does Rhode Island. Um, the white population, which is about 56% uh, of the total population, grew by about 6.4% between 2000 and 2010. The black population grew very slightly by about 1.6%. And the black population is now about the same as it is here in Massachusetts. But the Hispanic population, which is now 38% total, uh, grew by over a quarter, by almost 28%. And if you take the growth of the Hispanic population and the growth in the Asian population, you'll see where you had this large shift in uh, the population. And you can see it in various places, like um, we can go down here to uh, LA County, the county alone, one county, 9.8 million, uh, thus one and a half times the size of the entire Massachusetts state, and 10 times the population of Rhode Island. Let's look at one or two other states. Let's take a look at something like Mississippi. Here's Mississippi with a population of just under 3 million. Um, overall, it, about 37% of the population of Mississippi now is African American or black. Very small increase, about 6.2%, but uh, still growing faster than the half of 1% population growth of whites. Um, Hispanic population has grown dramatically, percentage-wise, but is still less than 3% of the total population of, of that state. Uh, you'll also see, if you look at the map, losses in population. So these beige, look beige to you, these beige counties are counties in which you saw an actual decline in population. Seeing a decline in the rural counties and we see rapid growth in urban counties. Uh, places um, like Mobile, Alabama, Birmingham, and so forth. Let's take a look at a couple more states. Let's look at something like North Dakota. Grand population of 672,000, roughly 50,000 more than the city of Boston. Uh, as you can see, it is emptying out in most places. 
from areas. That's all the beige where you had a population loss in a county between 2000 and 2010. You see some growth in um, uh, uh, Fargo uh, and in other parts of um, Grand Forks of, uh, of North Dakota. Uh, white population is 90%. It's a 90% white population. The black population is 1.2%, although it doubled from half a percent to 1.2% over the last decade. And the Hispanic population also grew rapidly, but still is only about 2%. So you can think about what North Dakota looks like. And finally, let's take a look at a state like Florida, um, where you see, first of all, massive growth throughout Florida during this period of time. The darker, um, darker blue shows a growth in the population of more than 25% in a single decade. Um, you see only a few places where they had loss. Uh, the white population is three quarters of the state is white. Uh, the growth was about 13% in the white population. The black population is about one in six people who live in Florida are African American. The population grew at about twice the rate of the white population, 28 versus 13. And the Hispanic population, which is now 22.5%, more than one fifth of the population, grew by more than 57%. So we're seeing dramatic changes and very different changes in different states. Um, if you wanted to see another state that grew very rapidly, here's Arizona. Uh, growth almost everywhere in Arizona. Uh, white population, 73%. Very rapidly growing Latino population, particularly, of course, along these counties in Santa Cruz, in Pima, and not surprising with that growth in that population, we have seen some pretty heinous immigration reform in that reform in that state. Um, and now you have the business community rising up against some of the changes because they're really, this isn't been really good for the economy. All of those kinds of demographic changes um, are affecting us in so many ways. Last week you heard about health care costs and the explosion in health care costs. I'm working very closely, as you know, with the Secretary for Administration and Finance, who puts together the budget for the governor. And uh, as we look out over the next uh, uh, decade or so, we see continuing fiscal crisis, almost all of it having to do with the growth in health care. Medicaid, we have to pay for half of that. The cost of health insurance for state employees, uh, and uh, now the Connect program. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, what this means for skill difference. We talk about it in terms of are we going to have in Massachusetts, which has very slow growth. Um, if you want to see something growing even more slowly than us, take a look at Connecticut, um, which had very little growth. It's one of the slowest growing, growing states and one of the states that's aging at uh, a very rapid rate. Um, uh, the Connecticut is facing a serious problem, not only in terms of its workforce, where will they get their young workforce, but they are facing an even more severe budget problem at the state and local level because of those demographics. So by way of introduction, demographics are really important when it comes to economics, when it comes to society and social issues, but as we're going to hear today, it has a lot to do with what the politics of this country will look like, what it's looked like in the past, and so forth. Um, Ryan Enos is relatively new to um, the Boston area. He's an assistant professor at Harvard University. He did his um, undergraduate work at Berkeley and finished his PhD at uh, uh, UCLA just uh, this year, or last year, and uh, has been teaching in the government department, uh, specializing and particularly looking at issues of uh, race and ethnic politics. He does a lot of work in quantitative methods within political science. He's associated not only with the politics department, the government department, the Institute for Quantitative Social Science, and the Center for American Political Studies. And so without further ado, Professor Enos, uh, the stage is yours.